As you know, with each of our lessons, we have a set of learning objectives. So let's have a look at what today's are. Starting off with defining CAD, we look at everything to do with CAD. We then take a look at discussing some of the important elements of CAD, following that with identifying typical AutoCAD setup. So how to set up your AutoCAD onto your very own laptop or computer. And lastly, and most excitingly, we end off with navigating the AutoCAD interface. Right, so here is the quote I've got for you today. The mind is everything. What you think, you become. This quote is one that you may think has no relevance to interior design, but in fact, it really does. In design, all of our ideas, our thoughts, and our proposed plans are sitting in our heads. We need to believe, to think, and to live these ideas for them to become reality, right? I just love this quote as it's so grounding and encompassing of what we do on the daily as interior designers. What are you going to need to grab for today's lesson? You're going to need a computer or laptop and an internet connection. Your computer is really the main focus for this lesson, but do not fear if you're wondering what specs to get or what computer to invest in. I'm going to go through all of this in this lesson. Please, please, please do not go out and purchase a brand new computer just for this lesson. It's not necessary. So stay tuned to see why. As you are well aware by now, we have our trusty AI bot Morpheus here to make your lessons fun, interactive and interesting. You can ask Morpheus any questions and add answers to the questions that I'm asking you. So remember, Morpheus is going to gain intelligence the more you interact. So please interact as much as you possibly can. Let's take a look as we start off with topic one, the basics of CAD, computer aided software. We then look at downloading AutoCAD, the AutoCAD program. And topic three, we start our journey in AutoCAD by looking at the AutoCAD interface. Let's get right into it as we start off with topic number one, the basics of CAD. I'm sure most of you have heard the term CAD being used in various conversations, right from architecture, interior design to engineering and possibly drafting. Can any of you actually tell me, though, what CAD stands for? Pop your answers into your Morpheus text box or simply make a note for yourselves in your sketchbooks. Just a handy hint, this may be an assignment question. You never know. Let's take a look and see if you're all on track as we investigate what CAD actually is. So CAD stands for Computer Aided Design, and it's literally all in the name. CAD means to use various programs on our computers that assist us in drawing and visualizing our design projects right from the very start to the finish. In the interior design industry and many others, CAD programs are our primary drawing tools. They assist us in producing accurate professional drawings for our clients and contracting teams using it for construction or using these drawings for construction. CAD is the process of using computers to assist the design process. With the help of CAD software, a designer can create models in an imaginary space, allowing the designer to visualize all the different properties of that design, providing detailed description about the components and graphical formats. Most importantly, however, CAD enables the conversation from a computer model to a manufactured piece. So it allows us to take the ideas from our brains, import them into the computer, and then recreate them into reality. So super exciting. Here's a thought. Ever walked past a contracting site and seen various teams building a wall or putting in a window or even laying a floor? Well, I bet you've never thought about it from this perspective. Construction and the design industry have many, many physical aspects to it, but a much larger part of our job in many ways constitutes as a tech job. With the introduction of CAD, technology's role in our industry and the impact on this industry has increased our job growths by leaps and bounds. CAD is used in a variety of professional industries such as engineering, architecture, interior design, jewelry design, fashion design, and so many more. However, sadly, CAD has replaced manual drafting for various reasons, but most importantly due to time, cost, and resource. However, with that being said, there is still a vital role in the design industry that sketching plays. We use our sketching to establish our key and core concepts and then make use of CAD to convert our concepts into workable, professional drawings. 
CAD and sketching are almost inseparable. They're inseparable elements due to the design process. In fact, I believe that creating professional presentational drawings by hand is a skill that most employers are searching high and low for. So do not abandon your sketching practice. The next question to ask ourselves from here is what is CAD used for? In its simplest form, CAD assists users in creating two-dimensional and three-dimensional design work to be able to visualize the construction output. So CAD enables the development of drawings, the modification of drawings, and optimization of the design process, hugely important in this industry. CAD is vital and assists us with the following aspects. Firstly, accuracy. CAD allows interior designers and architects to create more accurate representations and modify them easily to improve design quality. Secondly, a huge benefit of CAD is that it allows us to store our drawings and design work on the cloud, making accessibility to our drawings easier than ever. This could be right from a contractor needing to gather dimensions of an installation and being able to access the drawing of that particular dimension right then and there on site, to your client that wanted to check back on an installation that had been completed two years prior. Thirdly, everything is accessible at any point at any time. Unlike when creating manual drawings, which is drawings created by hand with your pen and your pencil, entire teams can check out plan modifications easy, including the contractor as well as your subcontracting teams. Next, being able to readily access drawings at any point improves our communication across any project. And lastly, having access to all drawings and design work at any point at any time will also, in effect, increase productivity. When creating drawings on CAD, we are able to see all of our layouts in one location and how they interact as one. You could look at the electricity, plumbing and other elements at one time, helping to create a more comprehensive design. Ultimately, this aids in less errors and changes during construction. Did you know that CAD can be traced back as early as the 60s? We have been using computer-aided design since 1960s. Can you believe it? The first introduction to CAD was not what one would call cost-effective or a cost-efficient option. This was largely due to the fact that machines were incredibly costly at the time. The increase in development of technology and computer power in the later part of the 20th century has allowed CAD to flourish. The concept of CAD was produced and founded by Patrick Henratty and Ivan Sutherland. In the early 1960s, the first true CAD software, a very innovative system called Sketchpad, was developed by Ivan Sutherland at MIT. This was a part of his PhD thesis titled Sketchpad, a Man-Machine Geographical Communication System. Really nicely explained by an article called Evolution of CAD. Even though Sketchpad was the world's first CAD software, the first commercial CAM software system and numerical control programming tool named PRONTO, which stands for Program for Numerical Tooling Operations, had already been developed in 1957 by Dr. Patrick J. Hanratty at GM. Thus, Dr. Hanratty is widely credited as the father of CAD or CAM. Dr. Hanratty software was used as the basis for nearly a dozen startup companies selling turnkey CAD programs. Today, an estimated 90% of commercial drafting software can be traced back to Dr. Hanratty's original program. An interesting fact, the term CAD does not refer to one specific program, but in fact, it's an umbrella term for any program that assists our design process on computer. Let's take a look at the various functions of CAD. Here is a very broad classification of CAD, but gives you a really nice overview of what it's capable of doing. Firstly, we have 2D CAD. We then have 3D CAD, 3D wireframe, and a solid modeling CAD. As you can see, CAD has many functions and allows us to create our design works via many methods and many forms. Let's take a look at some of the CAD software that is available to you as an interior designer. Firstly, we have AutoCAD, we have 3D Studio Max, Revit, SketchUp, SmartDraw, and SolidWorks. You will never find yourself using all of these programs at once. This is just a variety of some of the programs that are out there. There are so many programs, in fact, that you need to find a program that works for you best. So I technically only find myself working across three of these programs, and those are your AutoCAD, Revit, and SketchUp programs. I'm going to break these specific programs up for you as I find that they are the most efficient programs to get the job done. 
Starting off with SketchUp. SketchUp was developed in 2000 to make 3D modeling easy and fun to learn. So who is SketchUp used by? It's commonly used by architects, interior designers, landscape architects, civil engineers, as well as mechanical engineers. On a user-friendly rating, I have given it a 9 out of 10. SketchUp is one of my favorite programs as it's really easy to learn and has a really impressive output setup as well as visual generation ability. It has an intuitive interface and offers a free web-based trial version to users to learn 3D modeling. The drawing output, what drawing output does it have? So it has a 2D and 3D drawing output, but more so for the 3D users. It's much easier for 3D modeling, but can also create your 2D presentations. A really handy feature of SketchUp is that it offers visual or virtual walkthrough by integration with VR applications like Oculus and Microsoft HoloLens. Is it suitable for Mac or Windows? Because SketchUp is web-based, it can be used on both Windows and Mac computers from anywhere at any time. Users can import and export multiple graphic file types, view 3D models on mobile devices, and enjoy unlimited cloud storage for project sharing and collaboration. SketchUp Pro costs $299 a year, approximately, and comes with a 30-day free trial version. Users can also play around with the free SketchUp version at no cost as it is web-based. Next, we have AutoCAD. AutoCAD is a commercial computer-aided design software and drafting software application. It's developed and marketed by the company called Autodesk. AutoCAD is capable of producing any technical drawing, no matter how complicated, in the hands of a skilled operator. AutoCAD is by far the most popular of all programs. There are more CAD workstations equipped with AutoCAD throughout the world than any other package. AutoCAD can produce both 2D and 3D drawings. So who is AutoCAD used by? It's used in industries like architecture, project management, engineering, graphic design, city planning, and so many others. On a user-friendly scale, I've given AutoCAD a 7 out of 10, as I believe it's a fairly intensive program to master and learn, but once you've been trained on the basics, it's easy to navigate. Bear in mind, however, this is a fairly costly program to get your hands on and therefore is mostly used by larger firms. There is, however, a 30-day free trial that can be downloaded to test the product before you purchase it. Next, is it safe for Mac and Windows? Autodesk had stopped supporting Mac in 1994. However, in 2010, Autodesk announced that it would once again support Apple Mac OS software. And lastly, the drawing output is for both 2D and 3D drawings. Then we have the trusty Revit. Revit and AutoCAD are both programs by the company Autodesk. They both have similar concepts. However, Revit is more intelligent and more intelligently integrated into its setup. Who is this product used by? Autodesk Revit is a building information modeling software for architects, landscape artists, architectural engineers, mechanical engineers, plumbers, electricians, designers, and many other contracting teams. On a user-friendly scale, I have given this a 6 out of 10. Revit is a very time-consuming program and one that requires a lot of research and tutoring. However, once mastered, it is the best program to use and one that I have been using to date. It's one of the most efficient drawing aids as it creates your 2D models as well as 3D at one time. So it creates both 2D and 3D at the same time and therefore you're saving time and resources. Is it safe for Mac or Windows? So this applies similarly to the AutoCAD product as this is also an Autodesk program. However, I would recommend that it's used predominantly on a Windows program. You're going to find a lot more ease with this. Next, we're going to take a look at some of the benefits and advantages of CAD. So why would one want to use CAD? Let's take a look at some of the benefits. There are so many reasons why CAD is now being increasingly used all over the world. Here are some of the reasons. Firstly, the speed and output. Creating drawings on CAD is much faster than creating them manually. Accuracy. Accuracy creating your drawings on computer-aided software programs such as AutoCAD have high accuracy levels and it takes a tenth of the time it would take to create them by hand. Then we have replication and this is a big one. Replication of drawings or overlaying is possible with CAD. Copying drawings or placing details and drawings over each other like an overlay is simple and easy and therefore you wouldn't need to redraw details or drawings like one would need to if creating them manually. This also results in rapid drawing output. Then we have saving power. Drawings can be saved to be read at any point at any time. 
Drawings can be printed or plotted from a drawing on a screen with great accuracy. Space required to store on a disk is a fraction of the space required to store drawings on paper. Then we have scale. Drawings are accurately scaled to any scale at any point with one click of a button. You don't have to redraw anything like you would when creating drawings manually. Saving is a necessity and something that we rely on these days with CAD. The next topic for today's lesson and a really exciting one and I know one that you've all been waiting for, downloading your AutoCAD program. CAD describes using computers to create technical drawings, whereas the AutoCAD software is a specific type of professional CAD software that creates 2D and 3D drawings and models. On your screen is what a typical AutoCAD setup looks like. This is a drawing that I have created using my AutoCAD program. It looks impressive, right? Well, have no fear. I'm going to show you some of the tips and tricks to ensure that you are well on your way to creating drawings like this on your own. As we've learned above, CAD and therefore AutoCAD is a computer-aided design program marketed by the company called Autodesk. It's a commercial 2D and 3D drafting software. The AutoCAD software is used for several applications, including floor plan design, blueprints for building, bridges, chip design, etc. AutoCAD was designed to help users achieve realistic appearances of their projects. First things first, the software. I'm sure most of you are eager to learn some of the computer specs that one requires to be able to use these CAD programs. And one of the programs that we're going to look at specifically is AutoCAD. Well, you've come to the right place. Let's take a look at what you are going to need. I'm going to show you some of the specs that you would need in a computer that is suitable for CAD or AutoCAD specifically. Right, so on a Windows system, we've got the operating system as follows, Microsoft Windows 7 SP1 with these updates. And generally you're looking at a 64-bit computer. You can also look at the Microsoft Windows 8.1 and then Microsoft Windows 10. The memory required is as follows, your basic eight gigabit RAM and the recommended RAM is 16 gigabits. If you're wanting to find out a little bit more detail about the specification and need more information, you can pop on over to the Autodesk official site and they've got an amazing platform with all the information you could possibly need. So I'm going to link a link to the site on your summary notes or in your summary notes and you can dive a little deeper here. Just a handy tip here though, you do not need to go out and purchase a brand new computer for this to be able to work. Your current computer specifically for this course is perfect while you're testing out these packages. However, if you are considering a career in interior design or need a computer or you're going to buy your very first computer, then I would suggest taking note of the above mentioned specs and investigating wisely. Invest in a computer that will last you a long time and one that you don't need to keep replacing every couple of years. Right, so here are the system requirements if you are purchasing a Mac or you've got a Mac computer. Your operating system is as follows. And then the memory you're looking for is a four gigabit of RAM. And the same applies here. Go out, do your research. You do not have to go and buy a brand new computer right now. Spend some time looking at the program that suits you best and then gear your computer towards that. As I mentioned before, if you are wanting to find out a little bit more detail about the specification and you do need more information, this is the Autodesk official site and they've got amazing information and platforms, any little bits, tips and tricks that you could possibly need you can find here. So like I said, I've linked this in your summary notes and you can do a little bit of extra reading in your spare time. Right, so AutoCAD offers a variety of products to suit a wide variety of drawing styles and types and industries. Let's take a look at what they are. Firstly, AutoCAD has a free trial version. It allows us to create 3D drawings with the 3D CAD software. It allows us to do 3D animations, 3D modeling, and it's geared up for manufacturing. It also is fantastic for 2D CAD drafting, 3D printing, I bet you guys didn't know that, civil engineering, sketching and painting, which is also quite a shocker to the system. Sketching and painting is quite amazing with the Autodesk and AutoCAD product. And then product design. Next on our list is how to download AutoCAD. There are two options. Option one is your free trial and option two is to purchase the license. So as I mentioned before, there's a 30 day free trial that AutoCAD Autodesk offers to new users, which I suggest you make use of, especially if you're still in the early stages of figuring out which programs work for you. 
For your second option, this is if you've already decided that you are ready to take this to the next level, you want to go and purchase your license. Please only do this if you are 100% sure that AutoCAD is the program for you and you are committing to the interior design journey. It's an expensive program, but in the same breath, it's an amazing program to have and to learn. Option one, your free trial. So I've added a link for you in your summary notes that will take you directly to the AutoCAD free trial, the 30 day free trial. As you can see, it's a really easy and simple site. You need to just follow the prompts as I'm doing. So as you can see on your screen, I've gone to the Autodesk site. There's a little button there saying download free trial. Simple as that, click on that button, select the trial type, which is AutoCAD in this case, and you're gonna select next. It's gonna give you a couple of elements that you need to know before downloading. So just read through that. And then from here, you're gonna select next. You're gonna select one of these options, student or teacher. So this is quite interesting. As a student, Autodesk will offer you a two year free trial. As you can see, I've highlighted here, you just need to follow the prompt. So from here, you go to the education community. If that's not the case, we're going to select business user. This is the 30 day free trial option. Select the language that you want the trial to commence or start in. And then from here, you click next. And it's as simple as that. From here, follow all the prompts, put in your email address, and it'll show you exactly what to do. From here, we're gonna look at some of the tips and tricks to make your download faster and smoother. And these are suggested by the Autodesk product themselves. Firstly, you wanna make sure that you're using a 10 megabits per second internet connection. You also wanna make sure that before you start or before you do anything, you need to turn off all of your applications. This is a really big program and will take a lot of energy and memory from your computer. And lastly, make sure that you've got sufficient space on your hard drive. This is a key component. Trials are typically really large files. Look at the disk space and the recommendations on the system requirements. Next, we are going to look at some of the AutoCAD features. AutoCAD has some really amazing offerings and features. Let's take a look at the list available to us. Firstly, we've got 3D navigation. It allows us to change visual styles, data extraction, section planes. It allows us to create layouts. It's got a beautiful tool palette. It's got a command line and it allows us to import 3D models. From here, we move on to the exciting topic and our final topic for this lesson as we look at the AutoCAD interface. So at this point, we should have already downloaded our AutoCAD program, whether that be your free trial or your full version, and you're going to open it up. I'm gonna show you exactly how to go about doing that. Now that you've successfully installed your AutoCAD trial version, let's take a look at what's in store for us in this program. On your screen is my AutoCAD setup and what it generally and typically should look like. It's really cool. Don't worry if you're finding it daunting. I'm sure some of you do. Maybe some of you already know what it looks like and just need some sort of a refresh. Well, do not fear. I'm here to make all of this a little bit easier and extremely fun for you. So let's dive right in as we start off by opening up the program and looking at the interface and the dashboard. Let's begin with opening up the program. So firstly, you want to navigate to the application. So mine's been saved to my desktop and I'm going to pin it to my toolbar at the bottom of my screen. So as you can see, right click and pin to taskbar or toolbar. That's just gonna make it a little bit easier for you. You then want to double click on the application, which looks something like this, as I've done. The application is gonna begin opening and it might take a little bit of time, so give it a few seconds as it's quite a large program. Once your application has opened, your AutoCAD application, we are gonna look at the interface. This is where everything happens. So let's take a look and see where our journey takes us from here. Right, so once the program has opened, this is what you should be presented with. This is what we call the AutoCAD user interface. It's a really big word, meaning the face of the program that you're gonna be working on. It looks big and scary, but let me tell you, it's really not. So sit back and let's work through the user interface together. As we start breaking up the interface into manageable pieces. On your screen is a diagram indicating the areas that we're gonna be looking at as follows. Firstly, we're gonna be looking at the drawing area. We're then going to look at the application menu, the ribbon, a really exciting portion to the user interface the command window, the navigation bar, 
and then your status bar. These are just a few of the elements that we're going to cover for today's lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to build on this list. And we are going to be starting off with our drawing area. This is the area that all your drawings are going to be created on. So as you can see, that little highlighted section in pink with the pink arrow, it's like a gridded section. That is where you're going to create your drawings on. The drawing area is typically controlled by two elements. We have an element called paper space and an element called model space. We're going to be covering these areas in more detail over the next couple of lessons. But for now, this is where you're going to construct your drawings. Right, so on your screen is what your drawing area is going to look like. Do not fear if you don't know how to use the navigation area. I just want you to know each element and what it looks like before we learn about our tools. This is your drawing window. And as you can see, I'm doing a really quick little drawing on my drawing space. Next, we have the application menu, and this can be found in the upper left hand corner of your screen. This is a menu, much like in a Word document or a PowerPoint document that controls the start and finishing elements to your project. In your application menu, you're going to find commands like save, open, publish and plot some of the most important ones. To close the application menu, we can click anywhere outside the application menu or on a window. So that'll reduce the application menu to the little A that you can see now. Have a look as I navigate to my application menu. Click on it as I have done and look at all the options available to you. We have a new option that means open a new drawing. We then have an open option to open a drawing. You can see we've got the save option, save as, import option, which is really exciting. We can import files into this program. We then have the export option, which I love because we can export to SketchUp. We then have a publish option a print option and drawing utilities as well as close. This is your master switch as I like to call it. Before starting or finishing a drawing, you are going to be navigating here. Then we have the ribbon. The ribbon is the brain and epicenter to your drawing. The ribbon is the user interface elements that contains various AutoCAD commands. It's the central location for all of your AutoCAD commands or the tool set, if you will. The tabs are really powerful. They have panels of commands as well as options that relate to any task that needs to be performed on your drawing. So for example, if you select a hatch command, which means to hatch something in, a contextual tab appears. The tab contains a hatch editing command that appears automatically. So by clicking on the hatch command, you're automatically engaging in the option to hatch an object or a space or area. On your screen, have a look. I'm going to show you exactly what the ribbon looks like. So the ribbon is located at the top of your screen, as you can see, and it runs from right to left. On your ribbon, you've got a variety of different commands. So each ribbon section has been broken up into sections, for instance, drawing. As you can see, I've clicked on the drawing section. We have a modify section. We have an annotate section. Layers, property, block, etc. So as you can see, there's a variety of different sections on my ribbon. Do not fear if you're not familiar with any of these at this point. I just want you to familiarize yourself with the interface. In your next lesson, we're going to take this to the next level. Next, we have the command window or command line. This is a toolbar or section on your screen where you can type in comments and commands and names. When docked in a fixed location, for example, at the bottom corner of your screen as it is now, it has a fixed number of visible lines. But when it's floating, the command line can expand to show you more data. Let's take a look at exactly what I mean. This is your command bar or window right here at the bottom of your screen. This bar is used to type a tool that you might be looking for or a command that you might need. For example, as you can see, I'm going to type in to the command bar, save, because I'd like to save my project and then a variety of options come available to me there. Let's say for instance, I want a line. I type in line, and then suddenly I'm given or being provided with a line tool. As you can see, a really powerful tool, this command bar. Then we have our navigation bar, and this is really all in the name. It's a navigation tool. It's a panel located generally on the right hand side of your screen with a variety of tools in there, allowing you to navigate the screen. You start the navigation tool by clicking on one of the buttons on that navigation bar, as you can see the little red or pink arrow has pointed to. Some of the elements that you can expect to find on your navigation bar are your view cube, 
your steering wheel, a show motion, and zoom. I've listed a couple of additional elements in your summary notes with some further explanations to this, but these are some of the main ones that you're going to be using. As you can see on your screen, you start the navigation tool by clicking on one of these buttons. So as you can see, I'm going to my navigation bar, showing me right. So as you can see, that little command bar at the top there is navigating my drawing. It's moving my drawing around so I can get the view that I desire. Then we move on to the status bar. As you can see, it's located at the bottom right hand corner of the screen. This is a bar that contains icons or shortcut commands and provides quick access to some of the most commonly used drawing tools. The status bar displays the cursor location, drawing tools and tools that will affect your drawings environment. You can toggle settings such as grid, snap, polar, tracking and object snap. You can also access additional settings for some of these tools by clicking their drop down arrows. Just a note, not all the tools are displayed by default, so you can choose what tools you want displayed at this area. I'm going to show you this in more detail, but for now, this is where your status bar lies. As you can see, when you hover the cursor over any of the icons in your status bar, you can find out a little bit more information about each of them. There are so many amazing elements and areas that one could go into detail about on AutoCAD and the interface, but to keep it simple and not to confuse you any further, the ones that I've shown you are going to help you set up your drawings specifically for the design and purpose of our lessons. I'm jam packing as much as I can into these three lessons and it's an information overload I know but it's an exciting challenge to take on. To get a deeper understanding of AutoCAD, the tools and the commands, please jump on over to our technical drawing course where we break up AutoCAD over about two modules in a lot more detail. Otherwise, stay tuned for our next lesson, lesson four, where we go into more detail about the interface and our drawing ribbon. And that brings us to the end of this lesson. Let's do a quick recap of what we've covered. So we started off by defining AutoCAD. We then discussed the importance of CAD. We identified a typical CAD setup, and that was your interface, how to open CAD and how to download it. And lastly, we navigated the basics of the CAD interface. As I've mentioned in our next lesson, we are going to ramp this up and our skill set to another level. We are going to look at the CAD interface in a lot more detail as we tackle the ribbon and some of the tools available to you to create your drawings. This is what your challenge looked like.